It goes back a very long time. In fact, back in uh, when I was doing uh, my PhD uh, in the early 90s, I spent some time in the AI lab at Stanford in the computer science department. Uh, we were trying back then to teach computers to recognize images. Uh, and I can tell you it was just so painful and such a difficult problem back then. Uh, if you fast forward to where we are 30 some years later, uh, these machines, these models have become exceptionally powerful. Our ability to compute uh, has improved by a factor of a billion from the time that I was talking about you in grad school to today. So that is, if you spend a dollar today, you can do a billion times more calculations than what you could have done 30 years ago by spending a dollar then. Uh, so, you know, we have incredibly powerful computers, incredibly abundant data, uh, and then we have very sophisticated models that have actually bring these two things together and have created sort of uh, truly, truly innovative technologies. So journey started very early and in the last four or five years, of course, you know, we've been seeing a lot of that uh, penetrating not only academic research, but penetrating truly our day-to-day -day lives from self-driving cars to interactions that we have online every given day, and in the last couple of years, uh, the growth of large language models. It's exciting to see what's coming down the pike, and it's exciting to imagine what will happen in the future. We have introduced a bunch of courses in the span of the last three, four years. One of them was one that I did on breakthrough technologies together with the Dean of the School of Engineering, Sifu Chang where a lot of the course was about deep learning and AI models and robotics and self-driving cars and the like. We're using AI to teach about technology strategy. We have courses specifically on how these models work and what they do and when they work well and when they don't work well. We have uh, Gen AI courses where you know students really get experience on prompting and how to actually use these models. So there is curricular innovation in what these technologies do and how they work and when they work well and when do we anticipate them to penetrate industry and applications over the next two, four, six years, etc. There are, uh, there is the use of these tools in our ability to teach whatever content we have and there are a lot of thinking and curricular innovation in thinking about how is AI going to change as aspects of marketing, how is AI going to change investment management, how is AI going to sort of penetrate into accounting, reporting and, and audit, etc. So in some ways, it's multi-prong from teaching about the tools to using the tools to actually imagining how the tools are going to disrupt uh, different jobs and different industries and therefore looking for opportunities that our students may actually engage in. And we've been working diligently over the last three to four years uh, with some areas being sort of super interesting and having sort of tons of our students uh, uh, getting exposure. And in addition to that, some of these ideas actually hit the core curriculum, which means every single student gets exposed to some of these ideas in their first semester when they come in. We changed our core curriculum uh, maybe 13 years ago and we introduced a sort of fairly sophisticated business analytics core class. Uh, and, and this has been going on for, as I said, more than a decade, exposing students to machine learning, how it's being used, how sort of this is sort of changing different applications. So we have actually been leading in that space for quite some time uh, uh, among uh, most of our peer schools. Uh, and, I, and I think the other area where I think we're actually pretty strong is through our, through our deep connection with our peers at the School of Engineering, which is also useful to expose our students not only to our thinking, but also bring sort of some of the leading engineering faculty that talk about robotics or talk about sort of deep learning models and how they're being deployed from their point of view. And, and sort of imagining where things may go three, five, ten years from now. 
AI is also penetrating the research uh, that we do here at the school, and I think there are different areas. One is foundational research about AI models, how, you know, thinking about the math, thinking about how you train large language models to actually incorporate business objectives in their thinking, thinking about ideas uh, related to some concept called reinforcement learning. How do we sort of improve the systems based on sort of action and consequences that uh, we encounter in applications? There is separate streams of work that have to do with obviously utilizing the power of uh, these models in, in advancing the type of research that we can do, how we consume text, how we can categorize text, how we can actually use that in doing sort of analysis in sort of uh, in larger scales. And then the other thing that I think is profoundly important for us as we're thinking of our society and businesses uh, is to think about what's going to be the implication of AI in work and in people and ultimately in management and leadership practices. So we have people working on that as well. The last bit that I'm going to say is that we're also presumably thinking and working on specific applications of AI from investing, to climate modeling, to you know, accounting research. So, like, so this thing is penetrating uh, what pe different people are doing. Uh, but so it's either foundations, it's either thinking about implications to people, and then also using the tool to advance the research uh, infrastructure that we have here at the school. Over the next decade or so, we'll see sort of the first sort of very concrete applications of AI. I think some of them will be in our interaction online. Some of it may be in drug discovery, which I think is going to be something that's going to be disrupted and, and augmented and enhanced through AI models. I think we're going to see a lot of change over the next 10 to 20 years of something that uh, we call embodied AI or, you know, robotics. Uh, one of them is your self-driving car, but there could be other things that will be in our day-to-day -day life. And eventually what that will do over time is it will start to penetrate aspects of our lives, okay? And it will penetrate how we do things in our personal lives, and it will start penetrating how we sort of different jobs that our students take when they graduate will uh, be augmented. And, and sort of whole new uh, areas of uh, solutions or products or uh, will be introduced. I think AI will play an important role in thinking about climate uh, in a positive way. Uh, and, I, and I think it's going to be a driver of change that over the span of decades it will be profound. But I want to make one comment, and, and that is that it's going to be gradual. I'm mindful that people and large corporations are actually themselves occasionally resistant to change. Uh, and I'm going to give you an example. Back in 2000, each of us had a personal computer at home, and we were all connected to the Internet, and every bank uh, had really powerful computers. Uh, and we could have all switched to online banking back in 2000. And the reality is we didn't. Uh, we kept going to the branch uh, of our local bank. And, and I think the biggest driver of change happened probably during COVID. We went through 18 months of never visiting a branch in our, in our bank. And then we realized we'd never have to do that. Um, but we could have done it in 2000. And we waited for about 20 years. Uh, and that has to do with resistance, it has to do with people, willingness to adapt change, uh, organizations willing to sort of jump in and, and uh, welcome change. So I think that's going to be sort of a counterbalancing force, not in the capabilities of these models, but how fast we deploy these models to affect change. But I think it's going to be an exciting time over the next 10, 20, 30 years.